one of the most critical statistics to come out of the t-test of means, and in fact, out of most statistical tests, is the p-value. So let's take a little bit of time to talk about what a p-value is. So here, just to review, are the results of the test we did. The p-value is listed up here. It's 0 0.017. And here are the means of the men's heights, 179.8, and of the women's heights, 171.0. When we are talking about an experiment like this, we are assuming that we are sampling from some sort of population. So we are only measuring seven heights of males and seven heights of females, but we're trying to draw some conclusion generically about the total population of males and females in the world. So these seven heights that we have are simply a sample from the populations of all men, all possible men and all possible win women. And so our sample has produced an average of 179.8 for men and 171.0 for women. But the question is, are these really representative of men and women as a whole? This is really the question that we're trying to answer. And it turns out there are two different possibilities. One possibility is that there really isn't any difference in the height between males and females, that they have, in fact, the same average height, but by chance our sampling was unrepresentative. We just happened to get men, a sample of seven men whose average was higher than women, but if we had measured all men and all women, they would turn out to be the same height. The other possibility is that the sampling was represent, representative of the overall populations and that the heights of men and women are really different. And that's why we got two different values for our samples. So the question is, how do we decide between these two possibilities? The way that we're going to decide between these two possibilities is by evaluating the first one. That's the possibility that men and women really are the same, but that we just got unlucky. Perhaps uh, there happened to be uh, a number of basketball players in the room when we measured the men. And so by chance, we got a sample that wasn't representative. So to evaluate this, we use the p-value, which is also abbreviated as simply p. p is the probability that we would get results such as what we got if nothing interesting was going on. In other words, if the variation that we're seeing is just random. We just happen to get some men that happen to be taller than average, or maybe we happen to get some women that were shorter than average. But if we'd gotten a different group of men and women, we would have perhaps found no difference at all. So if we have a high value of P, something like 0.6, that means that things could happen like this 60% of the time if the differences between men and women were only random. So a high p-value like this means that it's likely that this is just random variation we're seeing. On the other hand, if p is 0 0.001, that means that only about 0.1% of the time would we get results like this if it was simply due to random chance. That's really not very likely. And so it essentially gives us an assessment that says it's not very likely that the change that we see is random. If it's really unlikely that these kinds of results would occur when only random things are happening, then we would suspect that actually something interesting is going on. It's not just chance that men happen to be taller than women, but that actually as a whole, men are taller than women. So P is basically an assessment of the null hypothesis. And in this particular case, the null hypothesis is that men and women are the same height. But in general, in all statistical tests, the null hypothesis is some form of nothing interesting is going on. These things are the same. They're not really doing anything, etc. And in general, in all statistical tests, if P, the value of p is low, then we have to reject the idea that nothing interesting is going on. In other words, we reject the null hypothesis and instead reach the conclusion that something interesting is going on, that the thing that we're measuring does have some kind of effect or is significant. So if you've been in experimental science for a while, 
you know that when you're doing an experiment, you've, you're always trying to set up things to get results that are significant. In other words, to get results where P is less than 0.05. So you do a lot of work, you carry out the experiment, and if P is less than 0.05, then hooray, things are different and everybody starts cheering. So the overall strategy is to determine between these two hypotheses that things are different or that things are the same by showing that the null hypothesis is wrong. It always seemed to me that this was sort of an odd and backwards way of doing things. Like, why isn't it that we are trying to show that the things are different instead of trying to show that they're the same and then rejecting that? It just seemed kind of weird. And there's a very fundamental sort of reason why we do it this way. If p is less than 0.05, then we can assume that the null hypothesis is wrong because it's really, really unlikely that this kind of an outcome could happen strictly due to chance. The problem is that if p is greater than 0.05, it's possible that we got that value because our null hypothesis is correct, but it's also possible that we got that value because our experiment was terrible. You can always do a terrible experiment and force p to be greater than 0.05. So the problem is that if p is less than 0.05, then we usually know what's going on, or we think we know what's going on in the experiment, probably. But if p is greater than 0.05, then we're not sure. We have the additional problem of knowing whether our experiment was good enough to show that things are really not different. So let's flesh out a little bit what I mean when I say that getting P of greater than 0.05 could mean that your experiment sucks. This has to do with the idea of experimental power. Power is the ability of your experiment to show that things that are different really are different. We could control the variation by the experimental conditions. We could increase the sample size if we have more time and money, but that's of course always a limitation. If it turns out that the two things really aren't different that we're comparing, then it doesn't matter how good our experiment is or how much statistical power we have, P will not get below 0.05. On the other hand, if the things that we're measuring really are different, then increasing the statistical power in our experiment will make p smaller. And at some point, p will be less than 0.05 if the things really are different. So based on what I said here, it seems like having too little statistical power is really the big problem. If we have too little statistical power, we can't show that different things are actually different. And we can't get p to be less than 0.05 when there actually are differences. So it seems like having more statistical power would always be a good thing. However, it turns out there are certain conditions where it's problematic to have too much statistical power. Then when you have a lot of statistical power, you are able to show that tiny things that actually aren't very important can be shown to be causing differences. In other words, we can get P is less than 0.05 when we have factors with a very small effect. So we see this happening sometimes in really huge data sets where we have things, factors that seem like they should really be insignificant. We are able to show that P is less than 0.05, but when we look at the actual effect of the factors, we see that it's negligible.